In today's episode of Things from China That Can Hurt You in Unexpected Ways, we have an ultraviolet germicidal lamp. But you might be thinking that the harmful bit that's going to hurt you is the UVC energy from it. But in reality, I'm not sure which is going to hurt worse. Well, that is going to hurt quite a lot. But the fact it can also maintain a charge with a big fat capacitor inside of up to 300 volts or more across these contacts when you unplug it is also a potential source of surprises. Let's plug it in. So I'm going to bring up the hoppy, the pink socket, because that is going to make it safer, obviously. Here is the hoppy tester, and I shall plug it in. And I shall plug this in here. And when I plug it in, I want to point out I will be exposing myself to some level of UVC radiation. I'm not too concerned about that. It's going to be a brief exposure. Uh, but watch what happens when this lights. Let's zoom down a bit just so you can see what happens when it lights. And I'll put it at a nice, comfortable height. Watch this sort of discharge inside here. So what you saw there was the filaments glowed briefly. And then the ultraviolet charge ultraviolet discharge started occurring. I'm going to keep my fingers away from that. I'm going to point it away from me because uh, looking at that is not a good idea. The power is quite low. It's 2.5 watts, which is actually underrun the lamp in a way, which is good. Uh, the current is 0.3 amps, 322 milliamps at 244 volts. And the power factor is an absolutely appalling 0 0.03 uh, power factor. So that uh, kind of... Uh, gives a clue as to the circuitry inside this. So I'm going to unplug this uh, before uh, I get I get nasty experiences. The lamp here can potentially put out to... I'm going to have to be careful here. In fact, you know what? Before I go any further, let's bring the meter in. Let's set it to... Let's set it to a 1,000 volts because, well, let's be optimistic about this. And we'll see, depending on when you unplug it in the sine wave, it will potentially hold a voltage across these pins. I can touch it under that one. Um, only 145 volts, that's all right. Let's uh, give it another wee blast. Unplug it again, see if we can get a, a higher voltage, because it does depend on when it does in the sine wave. Still about 140 volts. Every time you unplug it, it will be a random voltage, 329 volts. So that would definitely give you a bit of a zap. And uh, if I short that out with a screwdriver, you'll hear that it's available at quite a bit of current, thanks to the uh, gas discharge uh, shunting it here. So if I just basically get a screwdriver and short that, listen. Did you hear the pop? Did you see the little flash? That's not something you want to get your fingers onto. That would hurt. That would hurt a lot. It's a big capacitor. Right, let's open it up and take a look inside while I explain the science of how that lamp works and how they're ballasting it cheaply. I think this came from Banggood. Uh, I was hoping it was going to have a fancy electronic ballast inside. No, it's not. It's got a capacitor. So these lamps, and it's worth mentioning... Uh, oh, that's another test I'll do. It's worth mentioning, you shouldn't really finger these lamps. It's not going to harm you. Well, unless it's on at the time. But uh, it leaves greasy fingerprints. And in the case of quartz halogen lamps, the tungsten halogen lamps, those greasy fingerprints cause a build-up of heat and it causes devitrification of the quartz. In the case of these lamps, uh, it's different. If you put your fingers on the surface but you don't wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol afterwards, it will potentially inhibit the output of the certain wavelengths, the ultraviolet light, because these lamps can put out theoretically two wavelengths. You get different versions. You get the one with ozone and the one without ozone. The one with ozone puts out, it's got a very transmissive quartz or UVL glass, which can transmit the 254 nanometer wavelength, which is UVC. And it's the stuff that's it's used for germicidal purposes. Basically speaking, it kills Anything in the vicinity of the light uh, and causes, if, if, if you held it against your skin for any prolonged period of time, it would probably cause blistering in the skin. If you looked at it with your naked eyes, uh, because and unfortunately it's very alluring, it's a lovely colour, you would potentially wake up in the middle of the night with arc flash. You'd feel like there was sand in your eyes. Very unpleasant. It does pass. It's not a permanent thing. It passes in a day or two. 
But the other wavelength that you can get out of some of these lamps is 184 nanometer, and you'll know you've got one of those because you'll get that distinctive bleachy smell of ozone off it. And that has proved to be very tricky. Let me just go and grab some, some of these lamps. One moment, please. A box of the lamps and some holders. I, I found it very hard getting the exact size of holders for these. I wanted to make the world's worst pair of worst set of Christmas lights, the ones that can actually hurt you again. It's the germicidal Christmas lights. A great idea. I tried so hard to get the ozone ones from the listing. The ones marked O3 are ozone. Uh, this is not ozone. Not ozone. It was a lucky dip. The ones I bought that claimed to be ozone uh, were mostly not. So it was a, it was almost a, a pleasant surprise to actually get one that was ozone. I'd bought loads of these just in a desperate attempt to find, to find well, yeah, less than half of them generated the ozone. Th these were all supposed to be the ozone generating lamps. It's kind of uh, interesting the way the ozone layer works. It's continually splitting oxygen to... Uh, separate atoms of oxygen, they recombine ozone, and then the other wavelength of ultraviolet then recombines them, so they're always changing between oxygen and ozone. That's actually what these little lamps do, the ones that are O3. They're not super efficient at generating ozone, because they're also breaking it down as, at the same time as they're making it, but they generate a little bit. Uh, but one thing I want to test here, let's screw it part of the way in. Let's make sure that's discharged. Yes, that's fine. I think it's discharged. Yeah. No nasty surprises for me. Just out of interest. Have they followed the normal thing where the outer ring here should be connected to the outer ring here? That's no good. Unless it's through the capacitor. No, it's not. The, uh, the outer ring of this holder is actually connected to the tip of this. That's naughty because it means that as you're screwing it in, you could actually get a shock. But to be honest, you wouldn't be screwing it into this anyway. You wouldn't be touching this. Because uh, the ultraviolet light is very destructive. Breaks apart everything. Right, tell you what, let's get this lamp out. And grab a screwdriver. I shall grab a proper screwdriver for this, just to make it look like I'm professional. And we'll take this apart and I'll show you the circuitry inside. Which is, I will say, just a little bit disappointing. It's not what I wanted, but that's okay. It is what it is. When you buy stuff in the grey market, you get what you get. Oh, the dreadful power factor. Uh, because the power factor is absolutely dreadful, uh, it sees a high apparent power. So although this was only measuring about 2.5 to 3 watts, it would appear to the electrical distribution industry as 80 watts just because it uses phase shift. That is a big... I thought that was just a bit of trim. It's a while since I... I took this apart when I first got it, but I've made so many videos about these things the uh, you know germicidal lamps that I felt a bit awkward at the time. I could put it put it on his little hiatus. Uh, there is a bracket in here for the lamp. Well, that'll also explain why it was at an angle. There is only one screw holding this in. It's designed to take two screws. I can fix that. Uh, there's the capacitor, which is at oh, that's not good. I tell you what. Uh, let me see then. Let me just uh, pop this little cap off and hopefully that's where that came from. Otherwise I'm going to have to use deep probing with a soldier iron to get this back into action again. Mm -hmm. No, that is trapped around the rim. That's all right. I can fix that. Right, tell you what, that means I can measure this capacitor. I just pinged that little stun. I haven't a clue where it went. Uh, I can measure the capacitor by bringing the meter in, setting it to optimistically 200 microfarad. I really don't know what it's going to be. I'm always a bit coy about using capacitive uh, droppers, capacitive limiters. It's basically just a capacitor and sears the lamp. It's got a tungsten filament, but it's also got the glow discharge. I'll show you that afterwards. I'll do a little doodle, a little sketch. So here is the capacitor. The capacitor is going to... this connection. It's quite a high value capacitor. It's 3.9 microfarad. 
That is really quite high. Hold on, can I see that in there? Uh, get the right button here. It is 4.2 microfarad, 400 volt. Ew, spicy. Right, tell you what, I'm going to do a little doodle now and show how these lamps work. One moment, please. So here's a very simple schematic. All the work is done by the lamp. The capacitor allows a certain amount of current uh, to flow in each half cycle. And uh, in the case of the lamp itself, it has a filament. Now, the lamp is only rated for about 10 volts. Uh, these things were originally used in things like tumble dryers for sterilizing your laundry. They'd be in the air path, there'd be a transformer that put out a, a fairly high voltage. It has to be a slightly higher voltage initially, and they'd normally use a resistor to ballast it. This is a bit cheeky, actually, using capacitor. It's a bit over-minimalist. I'm not sure if it's going to impact the life of the lamp because uh, the capacitor can actually let through quite high current spikes. But the lamp has a filament in it, and at the ends of the filament, it's got a coating, a thermally emissive coating. And if you look at the lamp itself, if I get a bit of black card to show you this, is this going to be relatively visible if I do this? If we zoom down... Can you see that sort of white coating at the end of the filaments there? That is a thermally emissive coating that when the lamp is hot, it uh, starts emitting electrons. I'll just zoom back in this because I didn't mean to zoom out quite so far. Uh, so when you initially power it up, the filament heats up and it starts emitting electrons. It breaks down the sort of voltage required to couple to this, which is the mercury vapour inside. Now, if you actually look at the lamp itself, it's got the little glass support in here, and it's got the two electrodes with a V-shaped filament. Uh, the middle connection is purely for support, the uh, the two outer ones, the main connections, and the, the coating is at the top here. But at the back of that, I thought it was a getter at first, I don't think it is, there's a little metal plate also just sat at the back with a sort of textured surface, and it's supported by a little other little stem coming into the glass. And it may be a uh, amalgam material that actually, once this filament heats it up, it releases the mercury vapour, and that's kind of borne out by the slight hint of a mercury vapour in the back of this. But the main point of this is that it makes it, means that instead of having a fancy circuit and high voltage, whatever, like a fluorescent fitting, it means they can just run this at low voltage, low power, and the filament provides the heat and some of the ballasting effect, but also it uh, does the sort of coupling for the, ther the mercury vapour. The mercury vapour, once it conducts, actually sort of dominates, it shunts the... It forms a conductive path across that. I made a video about these. Um, so that's why you need a ballast in series. If you didn't, uh, it would potentially cause problems. That's why the capacitor is a bit naughty, because you may have noticed the filament, the glow jiggling backwards and forwards. It's kind of restriking really in every half cycle uh, and alternating between the two electrodes. But uh, with the capacitor, that's going to cause a little current spike each time. I would expect these to go black around the outside, but I've never really tested it for a long length of time. But that is... a. Uh, it. It puts out the UVC. The UVC is that destructive wavelength that sterilizes stuff in its vicinity, and that is its purpose. This is a chunk of aluminium with a plastic insert. I mean, otherwise it seems quite nicely made. I would guess this was probably an LED lamp uh, in a previous incarnation. It was specifically designed for this application, but it looks like a sort of universal case that they've just stuffed a capacitor into in the lamp holder for this. But that's what uh, a lot of companies did at the beginning of the pandemic, which we're just getting to the end of at the moment, hopefully. Uh, and they just cashed in the hysteria and everybody wanted to sterilise everything with ultraviolet. This is one of the products that came out. So if you get one of these, two things to note. Don't look at the light. Uh, always make sure it's in an enclosed area where you can't either expose skin or your eyes to it. And that includes pets and children. Another thing is to remember that because they just didn't add a capacitor across this, a resistor, should I say, across this capacitor, a one meg ohm discharge resistor uh, would have just done the job. It means that when you unscrew it from a lamp holder, uh, it could potentially hold quite a charge in that and could give you a good, nasty zap. But an interesting thing nonetheless, there is a video uh, dedicated to the GTL3 lamp. Uh, it's quite interesting, and the ways I tried driving it. But... Uh, this is the first time I've uh, used the capacitor. So I'm guessing that in lower voltage countries, at 120 volts countries, they may have a higher value capacitor or they may just use different circuitry. I'm not really sure. I don't even know if it's available for 
120 volt. But that's it. It's an interesting thing. It's certainly novel, if just a little bit freaky.